Horikoshi is the type of writer who likes to place a little bit of himself into every one of the characters that he makes. Be it in how he either tries to capture his favorite aspects from superheroes that he likes like Spider-Man in characters like Deku, or in how personality traits of his get reflected in some of his characters. Though sometimes his characters go a little bit deeper than this, created from the experiences from Horikoshi's life rather than his personality. And one of the best examples of this is the third year kitten with an iron gut and fear of people, that being Tamaki Amajiki, also known as Sun Eater. This is our kitten, Tamaki Yamajiki. I wanna... Tamaki Amajiki is easily one of the most lovable characters Horikoshi has ever put out. Be it his cute personality quirks like his timidness and his low self-confidence, or the visual gag where he has such trouble speaking with people that sometimes he just doesn't and leans against a wall instead. Though don't mistake these parts of his personality as a judgment of his overall ability. Tamaki can perform as well if not better than most professional level heroes, and he has very strong firm beliefs that he will defend passionately. Though before we can get into that we should understand the meaning behind his name first. So Tamaki Yamajiki is actually a very interesting name, as it both holds a reference to his ability, but also feeds directly into his hero name. So first you have his given name, Tamaki, which when broken down means recycled or linked, but it's also taken directly from the word environment, meaning Tamaki is to recycle from the environment or link to the environment. And then you also have to mix it in with his family name, Amajiki, which when broken down means heavenly eater, or more directly, heaven eater, though the word heaven in this context means the heavens, like the sky, rather than the divine divine heaven. So his full name either means heavenly eater taking from the environment or heavenly eater linked to the environment. And this name plays perfectly into Tamaki's quirk, Manifest or Saigen. This quirk allows Tamaki to take on features or characteristics of anything that Tamaki has eaten without digesting yet. He's also able to choose which part of his body gets to manifest this characteristic as well. And it is not limited to only food that he's eaten either. As long as his body has ingested it, Tamaki can implement it into his arsenal. He is also able to combine these elements together to create a chimera ability, basically turning his whole body into a living weapon. Though one of the downsides to his quirk is that the food that he is using is a limited resource, as his body can only reproduce what is in his system currently. Meaning that if he naturally digests or uses an ability, he would need to restock afterwards. So, to use his quirk effectively, Tamaki would need to eat a variety of food every day before a mission. Though Tamaki doesn't actually need to do this all at the start of the day, as he is able to consume and then instantly use the property of something that he just ate. As shown when he mixes together the chicken in his system with the crystals that he just ate during his fight with three of the eight expendables. Now the quirk itself seems to be based off the old adage, you are what you eat, which is a phrase about how your health is directly linked to your diet. And it comes from a phrase written by Anthem Brillet Saverin, which read, tell me what you eat and I will tell you what you are. Now Tamaki's quirk is actually really powerful, though Tamaki's quirk actually didn't used to be as broken as it is now. It was basically useless a few years ago, as his lack of confidence made it hard for him to produce anything, even a bean sprout, as he viewed everyone around him as naturally talented, which made his failure feel all the more harder. And this included his friend Mirio, who he believed shined like a sun over all the nervous wrecks like himself. Mirio then informed him that the only reason that he can stay as positive as he is, is because he's always trying to keep up with someone as talented as Tamaki. Mirio even taking Tamaki's words and twisting it, saying that he isn't just some simple sun like he believes everyone else to be. He's something greater. Someone who will eclipse all the others with his ability alone. All he needs is a little more confidence and he'll become a true Sun Eater. And in universe, that conversation is the origin of the Sun Eater name. But the origin outside of it could actually be very interesting. First of course you have the obvious callback to his family name, which means Heavenly Eater, or someone who is able to eat the sky, and the sky is where the sun is. Though speaking of the heavenly part of Tamaki's name, you also have his relation to Japanese mythos and lore, as Tamaki refers to Mirio as a sun that shines bright even in failure, and the goddess of the sun is Amaterasu, who was best friends with Ukomachi, a harvest goddess who could produce food at will, which is very similar to Tamaki's quirk. And then lastly, you have a possible reference to the Sun Eaters from the DC comic universe. These are massive destructive forces which are described as living weapons. They can consume anything and everything in their way, which is why those who created them called them Sun Eaters. Though, if Tamaki was in reference to another cosmic level threat that isn't the Sun Eaters, I think I know exactly who it could be that influenced him and his quirk. And that would be the unkillable, unstoppable, unendingly positive pink puffball that is Kirby, the Warp Star Warrior. Hi. 
as not only does Tamaki share a similar title with Kirby from the Right Back At You anime, with his name being Sun Eater and Kirby's title being Star Warrior, both being very similar, as not only is the Sun a star, but Kirby is a warrior who eats, and Tamaki is someone who eats so he can fight. They also both have very strong values when it comes to justice, both going out of their way to help someone when they're in trouble. Like when Tamaki stays behind to hold off three of the eight expendable bullets, and Kirby going out of his way to help Dinoblade. And then of course you also have the fact that the two of them derive their powers from consuming other things, be them living or not. Along with this, Tamaki also apprentices under Fatgum, who is a large round ball of positive energy, much like Kirby. But finally, you also have the incredible fact that they're just both undoubtedly adorable. Though Kirby's cuteness comes from more of his childlike personality and his honorable nature, where Tamaki's cuteness comes from is his direct connection to Horikoshi, his writer. As Horikoshi stated himself that Tamaki's nervousness was a reflection of his own during the Jump Festa 2017, as he found speaking in front of such a large crowd filled Horikoshi with such anxiety and nervousness that he needed to transfer it onto something else. And with Tamaki just about to arrive in the manga right before Jump Festa, he found it was a perfect outlet, as the nervousness and anxiety just transferred into Tamaki perfect, though this isn't the only place that Tamaki has taken direct influence from Horikoshi's own personal life. As in an interview conducted in 2018, it is revealed that the scene when Tamaki is talking about transferring into a middle school during the middle of the year and being kind of outcasted by everyone as they all had their groups of friends is something that Horikoshi himself had to deal with growing up. Along with this, Tamaki being approached by Mirio is actually a reflection of something that happened to Horikoshi in real life, as a kid approached him, talked to him, and helped him make friends with people at his new school. So he wanted to reflect this very happy memory of his in the manga itself. Though this might explain why Tamaki looks a lot like Horikoshi, though some would argue that he looks more like Sasuke from Naruto, as the big three themselves seem to reflect a lot of the main Naruto party as well, with the upbeat blonde, the black haired loner, and the girl. Yep just the girl. Though, if this was intentional, I have to believe that Tamaki's design was done in a way so Horikoshi could either mock the Sasuke-esque character or shatter readers' expectations because he acts nothing like that Sasuke-esque character. In fact, his introduction is almost done in a way to make you think he'll be, and then he immediately turns around and can't face the class. Though one of the things that makes Tamaki's character so great is the fact that even though he's very timid, he's also extremely steadfast in his beliefs and is willing to vocalize them against anyone who challenges them. And one of the things he believes in the most is that you should never downplay someone else's hard work. And we see this in both the scenes where Class 1A is fighting Mirio and he's stomping them and they chalk up all of Mirio's hard work and training to he's just got a really strong quirk, which kind of upsets Tamaki. Hey, look, that was such a good quirk! You're wrong. Mirio's quirk isn't what you should be jealous of. You should be in being his skills. And that's what sets him apart in the first years. Mirio did a work study with the hero, but didn't stop there. He kept building himself up. Unrivaled. Just that one word that can tell what level you're all at. Like how an ordinary person might think a pro's impressive and lack the ability to figure out why. If you can't tell how much hard work Mirio has put in, then you'll never be able to match it. Or when he criticizes the three expendable bullets of the eight precepts that they shouldn't idolize someone who doesn't actually care about them, as they made themselves strong, he didn't make them strong. Tamaki believes wholeheartedly in finding one's self-worth, because it's the one thing that he had the hardest time finding himself which I feel is another reflection of Horikoshi, as after failing to get his new series Barrage up and running, he fell into a deep depression, nearly giving up on manga in general. He needed to create something new for Jump as well, but he couldn't think of anything except for his old one-shot concept, My Hero. And it was from here that Horikoshi decided to fight against his depression by writing a story comprised of not only his favorite things, like comic books, but also taking all of his earlier work's best moments and combining them together to create a much happier and more positive story, turning My Hero, the one-shot, into Hero Academia, Horikoshi's new passion project. And this passion isn't something he found through anyone else, it's something he found from himself. Now, Tamaki might not be the strongest character in My Hero, and he's definitely not the bravest, but he's sure as hell the most lovable character that Horikoshi has ever created. And I hope him, Kirishima, and Fatgum get another arc or two in the future of Hero Aka. And if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more videos like it in the future, I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash many not the bad guy. And if you want to envelop all in your greatness, well first you have to buy a copy of Shimonetta from buyshimonetta.com.